Hello and welcome to week 22. Today we're going to get started with our rhythm warm-up and that will consist of triplets and eighth note syncopation. And then today is a very special day because we have finally made it to dominant sevenths. We've been talking about dominant sevenths since very early in the uh, video series and I've always said one day we'll get there. Well today is the day and to commemorate this day um, we have even changed the piano dojo theme, right? So usually the piano dojo theme is actually a major seventh sound. I use a G uh, major seven and a C major seven. They go back and forth for a second and then you kind of walk down in these uh, major seventh sounds. I've done the exact same chord motion but I've done it in a dominant seventh sound. All right so that's how excited I am about today. So we're going to do the same chord drill that we did with our major seven except now in the dominant seventh we'll be flatting the T all right, so we'll take a look at that. And then, like I said, we are gonna be playing some blues. And so today we're gonna to be taking a look at the breaking news blues, a little piece I wrote for us. So without further ado, let's head over to the drum and get warmed up. Let's get started with our week 22 rhythm warm up. We'll start on line one with the metronome at 40 BPM and the clicks will represent the upbeats. One, two, three and four and one, two, three and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Switch your hands. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, hands together, top line, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Very nice. Let's move on to line two. Now, I know I haven't done this yet, but it was coming. We were due for it. So for line two, we're going to enter into a triplet trance. All right, all triplets all the time. It's gonna be very important that you count your downbeats because it's easy to get lost in that forest of triplets. So as long as you stay focused and you keep those downbeats in line, hopefully we won't get lost. Let's give it a try. We'll speed our metronome up five BPM to 45 BPM. It will still remain on the upbeats. Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 Switch hands. One, two, three, four. One, Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Hands together, top line. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Excellent. All right. That was fun. I want to keep doing it. I think you'll notice that the, probably your tendency is going to be to speed up. I'm sure when I go back and edit this video, I'll hear that I was speeding up a little bit in there, but I was always trying to rein it in and stay focused on the downbeats. Anyways, let's move on to line three. We're going to go to half time now. So we'll cut our metronome down to 25. That means we will be going at 50. And now the metronome is going to represent the upbeat 
of the one and the three. For line three, here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 Switch hands. One, two, three, four. One, Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Top of the line. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three, four. Excellent. All right, and last but not least, we're gonna move on to line four. We'll speed our metronome up to 30, which means we will be at 60, and now the metronome click will represent the upbeat of the two and the four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. 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 Switch hands. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Top line. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, now that we're rhythmically warmed up, let's head back over to the piano. Here's a page with all of our dominant seventh chords. As you can see, what we've done is we've added flats to all of the T's, all right? And you'll notice that if the T was sharp, that it has now become natural, right? So that's dominant seventh. It's a pretty easy chord alteration to make. And we're gonna get started today with C dominant seven. First, we're gonna take a look at our right hand. Now remember, if this is our C major seven, in order to turn it into dominant seventh, we're gonna flat this T and you get the dominant seventh sound, which my favorite theory teacher once described as a more crunchy sound. You have the smoother major seventh sound and the crunchier dominant seventh sound. So remember that, crunchy, all right? Let's do our right hand inversions. Let's do it in our left hand. I think a lot of people find the dominant seventh a little bit easier because whenever you start doing the inversions, the distance between the, the flat T and the do is a whole step, and for some reason it's a little weirder when you've got to do a half step. Um, so anyways, let's try hands together one single chord. When it comes to playing the scale that is associated with the dominant seventh, let's think back to a lot of the musical examples that we've seen the dominant seventh in. And usually the dominant seventh goes with the five, right? The five seven, it's like they were made for each other. In fact, remember we have tonic is the one, 
dominant is the five, tonic and dominant. So dominant seventh is the seventh sound that goes with that dominant function, right? The five, seven. So what we're gonna be thinking here is that we're going to have to make our scale match the chord that we're playing. But we know that the chord that we just looked at has one flat in it. Now think about it. If you were using a C7, that means that that C is functioning as a five. And that means that we are actually in the key of F. And we know that the key of F has one flat and that that is B flat, right? And so what we're really doing here, instead of playing in the key of C, we're playing in the key of F, but we're starting and ending on C, right? Because we are in the key of F if this is the five. Let's look at that on the piano. So if this is the key of F, we had that B flat, right? So we're gonna think B flat, but instead of playing from F to F, we're gonna play from C to C. All right, so we just played from C to C, but in the key of F, because in the key of F, C, functions as the five. And if you were to see a C7, it would be the five of F. All right. Now, if that was enough to make your brain melt, don't worry. We're going to be looking at this a lot more as we get into these more of these um, seventh note chords. All right. It's a concept called modes. And in fact, this particular mode is called the Mixolydian mode. All right. But for now, just think the key of F, but playing from C to C, let's put that hands together. We're gonna to put the chord in our left hand and the scale in our right hand. Let's put the chord in our left hand and the scale in our, the chord in our right hand and the scale in our left hand. Let's scooch over to F7 now, all right? So if this is our F, major seven, then the F dominant seven is gonna have that flat seven, and we'll begin our inversions with our right hand. All right, let's do our left hand inversions. And let's do hands together one chord. Okay, if we were to see an F7, then that would mean that we were actually in the key of B flat because F is the five of B flat. The key of B flat has two flats, B flat and E flat. So instead of playing from B flat to B flat, we'll play those same notes, but from F to F now. And notice how it matches. It's got that flat seven. Let's try it with a chord in our left hand. Let's try it with the chord in our right hand and the scale in our left hand. Okay, and last but not least, let's take a look at G7 today. So if a G7 or a G major seven usually has this F sharp, so this is a, a case where we're actually taking the sharp um, T and we're making it a natural T. There we are. Let's try that with our uh, right hand inversions. Left hand inversions. and hands together one single chord.
All right, let's think about it. What is G the five of? It's the five of C. So that means the key of C, all white keys, everyone's favorite key, the people's key. We're gonna stay with that key, but we're gonna play from G to G. And you'll see, there we have that flat T. Let's add the chord in the left hand. Let's add the scale in the left hand and the chord in the right hand. Alrighty, now remember the word of the day is mixolydian, all right? We'll be looking at a lot more of those scales as we go, but now let's take a look at some blues. The blues that I designed for us today, the Breaking News Blues, is going to address the walking bass line, all right? I believe we've seen rolling bass lines in this video series, but we have yet to see the walking bass line, so that's gonna make an appearance, and then we're gonna take our first stab at improvisation today, blues improvisation, and we're going to try that out using blues scales, and blues licks. Now, technically the improvisation is optional, right? You could just read the piece that we have, but I would encourage you to just jump in and try. You know, learning how to improvise is all about kind of falling down a little bit when you first try it. But think about it, it's not like riding a bike. If you fall off on the improvisation, the only thing that you hurt is your ego. And hey, maybe that's kind of a good thing, right? So we're going to be uh, taking a look at this blues. Let's check it out. I kind of combined a couple things, right? Because I found this, we've got a syncopated right hand. And when you hear that, <laughs> it's got that sort of breaking newsroom feel, right? And so uh, I thought that that would go really well with a basic walking bass line. All right, we're gonna keep that syncopation going in our right hand, but we're gonna really be thinking about this bass line, and it's a very, very standard one where it's walking on all four downbeats. That's why we call it the walking bass line because it walks on each of the downbeats, thus giving us harmony and um, rhythm all at once, right? So this one is just walking up the dominant seventh chord and it adds the sixth scale degree in between the so and the flat T, just like that. All right, now remember, we're in the blues, we're in the key of C, so that means that we're gonna be using the key of C, we're gonna be seeing F chords, and we're also gonna be seeing G chords. Now the blues is a funny key, or rather a funny style, because every chord in the blues can be dominant, all right? So sort of usually how we were just talking about the five being, um, the only chord that has the dominant sound well we're going to break the rules a little here in blues and everything is going to have that crunchy sound and that's kind of what makes the blues blue is that crunchiness right so we're going to be looking at the three chords that we just practiced the c7 the f7 and the g7 and when we walk those up Okay, and we'll notice that we have a standard 12 bar blues form, okay? Now a lot of times the only thing you'll get when you get a piece of music for the blues is this first page here that I've circled, okay? Um, it's just a simple 12 bar blues, so usually you know you've got your first four bars of one, you've got a couple bars of four and back to the one, and then you alternate between the five the four, and you bring it back to the one, and usually that will loop you back around, right? But you will also notice that over here, I've given you a very more empty 12 bar blues, okay? And that is because this is sort of what you would see if you would be reading a chord chart, all right? And you don't have to write it out like this, like especially if you want to get the melody in there, but one thing that all the blues players will know how to do is that when it's time to play um, and improvise, right? After you've played the melody um, for the audience to hear, well then you can play the entire form again, but you can sort of empty the measures 
of their melody notes and you can begin to play around by adding your own in, right? So what we're gonna do when we read this is we're gonna read through the beginning, we're gonna read the melody, or as some jazz musicians like to call it, they're gonna read the head, all right? Then we're going to jump to this page and we're going to be walking that same bass line, all right? We don't wanna to worry too much about the bass lines today, so if you wanted to try out some fancy bass walking, you know, you can try that on your own, but, to but for this piece, I really just wanted to take the decision making out of the process and let you really spend most of your brain power on attempting to improvise, all right? So when I play this for you, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna improvise over this form twice. And you can do it as many times as you want. When you have a full band, you know, you might loop over this form, you know, 12 times, 16 times, you know, while everyone takes a turn on the solos and maybe everybody takes two times on it, right? So we are gonna look at it twice today, all right? I'm gonna give you um, a couple different demonstrations of just some really basic ideas. I'm not gonna try to win a Grammy here. I'm just going to jump in and try to see what happens if I keep my left hand walking on autopilot and then play those blue scales that we went over last week on top of it and see what happens when I put them together. All right, so the first repetition that I play over this blues is going to be just putting the blue scales on top of the, of the walking bass line, all right? And the second thing I'm gonna do is what we call licks. And these are little pre-programmed um, little pieces of melody that, um, to be honest, are usually pretty easy to do. And they're usually mimicking some kind of like harmonica or the tremolo of a guitar or a saxophone, right? So we'll look at what the, it would be like to use the scales first, and then I'm gonna show you some of my favorite blues licks on each of these changes, all right? Now when you are all finished, and we're all finished doing our improvising thing, we're gonna look right here, and it's gonna say DC Alcoda. Now what that means is da capo, an Italian phrase that means to the top. If you think about where you put a cap, you put the cap on top of your head, we go to the capo, all right, so we'll go back to the beginning, read the melody, and when we get to the coda, we'll jump down to this little ending right here. Instead, we will not read this, we will read this, and that will end the tune for us, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just jump in on this hands together because you know, I don't think you really want to hear me play that right hand for 12 bars all by itself. It's a very basic syncopated melody. If we've been doing 22 weeks of syncopation warm-ups, I think we can handle this. No, just remember that, you know, all of these notes are coming in on upbeats, right? The only time that the right hand sees the downbeat is on the one, which means when we're walking, you know, the, the, the walking lines are going to come in between on the downbeats, and that's and the right hand is gonna be going in between the left hand, okay? Now I will share the virtual piano keys with you on this one because when I'm improvising, I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and try the breaking news blues.
have it. If you enjoyed that sheet music, you can find that and much more on my website, pianodojo.com. All right, so uh, we made it to Dominant 7th. Super happy to be here. Happy practicing.